The Ukrainian armed forces struck the large landing ship Konstantin Olshansky with a Neptune missile, said Dmitry Platenchuk, the spokesperson for the Ukrainian Navy. The extent of the damage is being specified. However, he clarified that the ship is currently non-combat capable. I would like to remind you that the Russians seized the Konstantin Olshansky ship during the occupation of Crimea. For nine years it was dismantled for parts, but a year ago they decided to restore it. Additionally, the spokesperson for the Ukrainian Navy confirmed the defeat of another ship, Ivan Kurs, in Crimea. As for the Ivan Kurs, it is another Russian landing ship. We can confirm the defeat of the reconnaissance equipment in the assault part of the ship. So effectively, it is not combat ready, it cannot perform task as intended. Satellite images from March 24th show the damaged reconnaissance ship Ivan Hors. The point of impact is visible at the rear of the vessel. For comparison, I took an image from March 23. Hey, my name is Alex and this is a quick update on the Russian-Ukrainian war, from the perspective of someone living within it. Meanwhile, the Russians once again attacked Ukraine at night with shot-type drones. According to official statements, the Ukrainian armed forces shut down all 12 kamikaze drones launched towards Ukraine overnight. I will remind you that over the past few days the Russians have carried out the mass rocket attack, primarily targeting energy facilities in Ukraine. The Kharkiv region has suffered perhaps the most from this attack. According to official sources, it will take more than a year to restore Kharkiv Test 5 power plant. Currently, Kharkiv's electricity supply is being provided by other regions. The full expand of the damage to the internal power plant and the necessary restoration work can only be accessed after the completion of inspection and debris clearance. However, according to experts in energy sector, it is already evident that this is extremely labor-intensive and costly process, comparable to the new construction. With each new Russian missile strike, more interesting details regarding the no analogs of Russian weaponry are being exposed. In addition to yesterday's successful interception by the Patriot system, it was revealed that two Russian Sokon missiles, which supposedly should not be intercepted, were intercepted. It was also discovered that the Russian cruise missile X-101 is equipped with an optical guidance system in the final stage of flight. The system is called Odblesk U. The system, consisting of three limbs, compares the terrain image with the reference images and guides the missile accordingly. Therefore, X-101 missile arrive at dawn. The system is blinded at night. Although all this equipment often does not correspond to the declared characteristics and quite frequently it does not work at all, this also applies to the accuracy of all their missiles and bombs. For instance, over the past week there have been eight known cases where Russians' aerial bombs fall short of reaching Ukrainian territory. This mostly occurs in the direction of the Sumer region. So despite all this, Ignoring and underestimating the danger of their weapons is not advisable. Russians, as heirs to the policies of the USSR, prioritize quality over quantity. Therefore, even if every tenth missile only reaches its target, it can still cause a great deal of destruction and suffering. Meanwhile, Russian propaganda suggests completely destroying the city of Kharkiv. Declare Kharkiv 24 hours for evacuation and erase it from the face of the earth. Well, to wipe Kharkiv off the face of the earth, it will take a lot, <laughs> a lot of things. These are the conversation and proposal they have. And it is not just an isolated incident. They regularly discuss destroying not only cities in Ukraine, but also in other countries around the world. NATO is considering the option of shooting down Russian missiles near its border, reports the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Poland. Warsaw takes Putin threats very seriously, as he has shown that he is capable of anything. Therefore, NATO is considering the possibility of shooting down Russian missiles located near the alien's border, 
say Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs of Poland Andrzej Szejna in interview with RMF FM. Similar views were expressed by the Foreign Minister of Lithuania Gabriel Slendersberg. He believes that NATO forces should shoot down Russian aircraft violent in the alliance's airspace. Meanwhile, the Russians clearly want to link the terrorist attack at the Krokyu city hall to Ukraine, even after ISIS claimed responsibility for the attack. This would greatly ease their justification for their action in Ukraine territory and potentially allow them to escalate the war even further. ISIS or Ukraine? Of course Ukraine. That's how the secretary of the Russian Security Council, Nikolai Patrushev, responded to a question from the propagandist media outlet SHOT. And the director of the FSB of the Russian Federation, Bortnikov, stated that Ukrainian special services facilitated the territory attack at Krokyus, but it was prepared by radical Islamists. The criminals intended to flee abroad, specifically to Ukrainian territory. At the same time, he noted that the information is currently being finalized and he does not want to speak baselessly. Bortnikov added that the Ukraine allegedly trained militants in the Middle East and the security service of Ukraine should be recognized as a terrorist organization. He also stated that beside Ukraine, the United States and the United Kingdom are behind the attack. So, in essence, the United States and the United Kingdom warn Russia about a possible terrorist attack. Then Putin calls the warnings blackmail and ignores them. The terrorist attack occurred, resulting in at least 139 casualties. ISIS claims responsibility for the attack. Putin propagandists, the secretary of the Russian Security Council and the head of the FSB all say Ukraine and the Anglo-Saxon are to blame. Where's the logic? Logic gone. It is also responded that the Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs rejected Interpol offer to assist in the investigation of the terrorist attack. We will handle it ourselves. We are already accustomed to the West's double standards. We will act solely based on our understanding, what the West seeks and by what means, Lavrov stated. At the same time, the White House asserts that the terrorist attack at Krokus had no connection to Ukraine. John Kirby, the coordinator for strategic communication and the White House National Security Council, described Russia's attempt to find the Ukrainian trains in the recent terrorist attack as propaganda. He added that ISIS was behind it. This is just another manifestation of Kremlin propaganda. This is all they can do in an attempt to find some justification for their continuous violence and looting he emphasized during a telephone briefing. Meanwhile, Iceland will allocate 2 million euros for the purchase of ammunition for Ukraine. The relevant announcement was made by the government of Iceland. Additionally, Iceland will support the purchase of equipment for women in the Ukraine army to meet the needs of female military personnel, provision of uniforms, body armor, medical and hygiene supplies, is proposed for 75 million Icelandic krona. And the Bloomberg's report that Ukrainian military personnel may receive twice as many shells under the Czech Republic initiative. 1.5 million ammunition rounds for artillery. And Ukraine is not standing still and is developing its military production. From what has been made publicly available, we know that Ukraine manufactures shells, armored vehicles, howitzers and drones. I am confident that there are also many developments that have not been reported. Meanwhile, the French have started discussing the possibility of involving in the war in Ukraine more frequently on their televisions. For instance, the French television channel LCI reports that France may directly enter into a war with Russia in event of a collapse of the Ukrainian front. Paris is considering at least five options. France builds military factories in Ukraine involving its engineers. France engages in demining and prepares Ukrainian soldiers directly in Ukraine. France defends Odessa by installing air defense systems. France deploys troops to create a defensive zone. France fights alongside the Ukrainian armed forces against Russia 
which could lead to a third world war. And now regarding the situation on the front line. It is tough practically everywhere. Here, for example, is a description of the current situation on the Avdiivka direction from the servicemen of the Ukrainian armed forces. Right now it is very difficult in Berdichevsky, Pervomaisky, in the Semenyuka area and near Nevelsky. To the west of Olivka, the enemy is currently advancing where the local terrain was. They are trying to avoid the lowlands and gullies because they will quickly meet their demise there. There have been success in Pervomaisky, as well as Berdichevsky. Niva Nevelsky, a mass assault on the village itself, was successfully halted. The Russians have withdrawn to their original position. The enemy continues attempting to storm towards Novobakhmutivka and Ocheretene, but without success. Currently, along the entire front line, the configuration of the front line is reaching its final stage. What happens next largely depends on the situation in adjacent areas Krasnogorivka to the southwest and New York to the northwest. Yes, there is New York village over there. Or the Russian may decide to play a game of cat and mouse and crawl towards Novoselivka, Persia and Umansk. From this same direction, another soldier reports the following. Russians have intensified their activities in the settlement of Berdichi, attempting to storm our position. I wonder how they agreed to go on the assault, knowing that several previous groups didn't return. Idiots! And the fighters of the 95th Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces and the 12th Brigade of the National Guard Azov halted a large-scale attack by the Russian armored forces with armored vehicles and motorized infantry unit east of Ternove in the northwest part of Balka Krule. In turn, the Ukrainian general staff reports that the Urikhiv direction, the enemy with the support of aviation, attacked the position of our defenses four times in the area of Staromayorsky, Robotine and northwest of Verbova. From the same direction, a situation report from a soldier of the 65th Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces. In Robotina, the situation is dire, with Russians relentlessly bombarding with artillery and aviation. As for assaults, everything is normal. We consistently neutralize 1520 suicide Russian assaulters per day. Also, they have a new trick, sending in an explosive-laden armored vehicle as a kamikaze. Then they detonated themselves near our position. And then they storm with their famous motorized infantry unit. We are all alive and well, thanks to the volunteers for the drones and to partners countries for supplying ammunition. Recently, since the EU countries began to stir, the ammunition supply for artillery has indeed increased. And this is a fact. Meanwhile, the 46th Brigade expressed the following options. One of the most crucial issues at the moment is combating aerial bombs carriers. This undersolved problem is gradually transforming from a matter of quantity to equality. And on some front lines it has already shifted. By summer this issue needs to be resolved, either entirely or minimized. It should be noted that the Ukrainian armed forces also use guided aerial bombs, but on a much smaller scale. Cases of Russians using chemical grenades have also become more frequent. It is not said that it is something new. Chemical weapons have been used in wars since World War I. Soldiers in position typically have gas masks. War is war, but delivery must be carried out. So the military personnel filmed a delivery service close to the front line in the Bakhmut direction. <laughs> <laughs> and that wraps up today's video. If you found this information helpful or insightful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.